Commencement is a time to celebrate enduring traditions. At Western, ours is a tradition of making a difference, of being the difference. Today, we honor that tradition by presenting an honorary doctoral degree from Western Washington University, made in recognition of exemplary contributions to humankind. I invite the Honorable Ralph Monroe to please come forward. Provost Carbajal and Trustee Sharp, please step forward to assist me in awarding the degree. Long after his official retirement from three decades in public office, including 20 years as, West, as Washington's Secretary of State, Ralph Monroe remains one of the state's most respected political figures, known not only for statesmanship, but for his commitment to a life of public service. A champion of environmental preservation, good government, and helping people who are vulnerable, Monroe continues to exemplify the life, the power of a life lived for service. Mr. Monroe began his career in state government soon after completing his Western degree. He did so as an aide to Governor Dan Evans in the mid-70s. He helped coordinate the resettlement of thousands of Vietnamese refugees in the state of Washington, by the way, while California's governor wanted to turn them away. A few years later, Monroe led the charge to ban the capture of orcas in Puget Sound after watching in horror as hunters used explosives to corral whale calves for display in Southern California. Throughout his career, he has been a leader in organizations that help people with developmental disabilities. He's traveled to Africa with Rotary International to help vaccinate children against polio and continues to volunteer serving meals to homeless people at Olympia's Salvation Army. As Secretary of State from 1980 to 2000, Monroe was instrumental in streamlining, in streamlining voter registration procedures and modernizing the state's election system. He also served as the state of Washington's unofficial ambassador to the world, visiting many countries on trade and in cultural missions. Following his retirement from government in 2001, his friends and supporters matched a $250,000 grant from the Higher Education Coordinating Commission to fund the Ralph Monroe Institute for Civic Education, an institute still very much contributing to the life and vitality of Western Washington University, as well as to the state we exist to serve. Mr. Monroe and his family have connections to Western dating back to the university's origins. His grandfather, a Scottish-born stonemason, helped build Old Main in 1896. Monroe's mother attended in the 1930s and his brother in the 1950s. Monroe himself worked his way through college by dispatching snow plows on Whatcom County roads and tending bar at a downtown Bellingham pizza parlor. <laughs> In 1989, Western recognized Ralph Monroe as a distinguished alumnus, and from 2009 to 2015, he served on Western's Board of Trustees. For many years, he and his family hosted annual picnics for Western alumni and students at their home, Triple Creek Farm, uh, which they have turned into a conservation area with the Capital Land Trust. It is with great pleasure that I present to you the honorary doctoral degree. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to put your hood on here, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Sharp, Provost Carbajal. It is now we're in for a real treat because we've also pre prevailed upon Dr. Ralph Monroe to be your commencement speaker. Dr. Monroe. Well, first off, Talia, good job. You're, you're a wonderful lady, and I'm sure your family and your your people are very proud of you. Great work. And for the graduates, okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Now, where did they find this old guy? 
be our speaker. Well, let me tell you, they tried to get Drake, <laughs> but uh, he was too busy fighting with Meek Mill. And they tried to get J. Cole, but uh, he's in Fayetteville this weekend working on the Dreamville Foundation, which is a pretty good program. And uh, then they tried to get Kenrick Lamar, and uh, he said, go get McLemore, he lives up there. <laughs> but McLemore graduated from Evergreen, so he wouldn't show up. <laughs> so you're stuck with me. Uh, two things. First, this speech will be short. I remember my graduation day. I didn't care who the speaker was. My folks wanted me to go through the ceremonies, and um, my mom had passed away, and my dad came up for the graduation, and all I really wanted to do at this moment in your life was get my dad back in the car and headed home to Bainbridge Island so I could get back down to Cap Hansen's Tavern and have another 14-ounce schooner. <laughs> and I, I want to tell you that a 14-ounce schooner in those days cost 25 cents. <laughs> and after that uh, very nice introduction, I'm going to tell you the truth is the, my grades at Bainbridge High School were so bad that I barely got into Western. Then when I was here as a freshman, I got kicked out for drinking too much beer and raising hell and trying to crash a dance at the Viking Union. <laughs> and then I got back into Western the next year on social and disciplinary probation. And then it took me five years to graduate. I, I distinctly remember my dad asking me, is there any particular year you intend to graduate? <laughs> For the life of me, I don't know why they asked me to speak at graduation. <laughs> and, and now they're giving me a doctorate. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, on to the message. What's happening around us? What's going on as you leave this campus today? Dean of Faculty mentioned this. I have two brief messages for you today. The first one is this. Have faith in our country and its people. Perhaps the description is in order. The presidential candidates are running on the dark theme that things simply aren't as good as they used to be. Our problems are unprecedented and seemingly impossible to deal with economic uncertainty, unrest on the college campuses, racial tension again, rioting in black communities and allegations that the police are too heavy-handed. There's a growing concern about the environment. The president, sick of gun violence, chides the gun lobby for its unwillingness to move on the issue. There's an unpleasant and unpopular war across the Pacific. In the Middle East, Israel is on edge and the critics slam the president for not doing more to help. Russia, determined to maintain control of its surrounding borders, invades a neighbor, and the president is again accused of weakness in face of the Kremlin aggressor. The president's approval ratings languish below 50%, and the race to succeed him is all but a free-for-all. One bombastic candidate is threatening to run as an independent in the midst of all this, and there's a vacancy on the Supreme Court. The lame duck president knows it's his constitutional duty to nominate a replacement, but the Senate Republicans vow to block him. Well, yes, I was there. I'm not describing 2016. I was describing two years after I graduated from WWU, 1968. And then it got worse. First, Dr. King was assassinated on the balcony of a hotel or a motel in Memphis, Tennessee, and cities burned all across America. And then the leading Democratic candidate, the young, bright, articulate, former and brother of the former president, Bobby Kennedy, was assassinated in a kitchen in Los Angeles on his way out from the Victory Party. Our political party conventions that summer were surrounded by rioters. The country was in turmoil. Now, I don't know if any of you are sailors or not, but when you sail across a lake or a bay and you reach the other shore and then you turn into the wind to change course, it's called coming about. You head into the wind and your sails flop about and then the person at the tiller sets a new course. 
In some ways, America is like that. I think we are now, in this election, setting a new course. And I urge you today, graduates, don't listen to the nitpickers and the naysayers and the purveyors of doom. We are still a great nation, and you have a terrific future ahead. Listen to the people that want to bring us together, not to the people that want to tear us apart. And whether it be, whether it be, And whether it be on the national stage or in statewide debates or on this campus, anyone that tells you that we are too weak to live with freedom is not your friend. Stand by, assist, and help your neighborhood, your state of Washington, and our country to grow and to prosper and to enable, enable all people to succeed. And just a brief second message, and that is to follow your dream you will be much, much happier if you do. My folks always wanted me to go to law school. I wasn't so sure. But I took the tests and enrolled at Willamette School of Law in Salem. I wasn't enthused about three more years of classrooms and study. On our first day of orientation, the law school dean told us it would be difficult. He said, one third of you will flunk out. Look to your left, then look to your right, one of you will not be here next fall. I looked at the guy on my left, and he looked back at me. I looked at the young lady at my right, and she looked back at me. And then I said, look, I'll make it easy for you both. I'm out of here right now. <laughs> Vamos, I was gone. I went back to Olympia and worked for the legislature as a flunky and as a supply clerk, and I loved it. And that led me to my career. Like the sailboat, you're going to flop around a bit. We all have. But look for your dreams and follow them. You will be much, much happier. For my entire political career, I only had one theme, and that was to help make this state as good for our children as it's been for us. If you do that, you're going to be happy, and so am I. God bless each one of you, and congratulations, and way to go. Thank you, Ralph.